In 2005, a seemingly ordinary suburban community in the quiet tree-lined streets of a small town was shaken by an extraordinary series of events that would lead to scandal, betrayal, and ultimately, murder. It all started with a surprise birthday party, a celebration that was meant to honor a beloved husband, father, and grandfather, but instead became the stage for a shocking revelation that would unravel a life built on secrets. The man at the center of this tumultuous drama was Peter Reynolds, a successful businessman, respected in his community and adored by his family. Peter had worked tirelessly over the years, building a reputation as a reliable and upstanding figure. His wife, Ellen, was equally admired. They had been married for over 40 years, their relationship considered by many to be the epitome of marital bliss. They had raised two children, both of whom had grown up to be well-adjusted adults with their own families. Ellen was the epitome of grace and warmth, a woman who had dedicated herself to her husband and children. However, as the years went by, cracks began to form in their seemingly perfect life. Peter had always been a bit of a workaholic, his long hours at the office taking a toll on his relationship with Ellen. Their intimate moments became fewer and their communication more strained. Ellen, a woman of patience and understanding, had quietly borne the brunt of this emotional neglect. She was aware of Peter's frequent business trips and late nights at the office, but she trusted him implicitly. That was until the fateful day when everything changed. Peter's 70th birthday was approaching, and Ellen decided to throw him a surprise party, inviting family, friends, and close colleagues. It was meant to be a joyful occasion, a celebration of Peter's life, and a chance to honor the man who had provided for them all. She meticulously planned every detail, choosing a venue, sending out invitations, and making sure everything would go off without a hitch. But little did she know, the party would expose a betrayal that would shatter her world. As the day of the celebration arrived, Ellen could sense something was off. Peter had been distant in the days leading up to the party, even more so than usual. He had become short with her, and his mood swings were unpredictable. She dismissed it as pre-party nerves, but deep down, she couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. She had no idea what was about to unfold. The venue for the party was a cozy, elegant hall on the outskirts of town. Family and friends gathered, filling the space with laughter and cheerful conversations. Peter, who had no idea about the surprise, walked in expecting a quiet dinner with his closest family members. Instead, he was greeted by a sea of familiar faces, all eager to celebrate his milestone. As Peter looked around in stunned disbelief, Ellen was right there by his side, her smile hiding the turmoil she felt within. The first few minutes of the party were full of light-hearted exchanges and congratulatory remarks, but the atmosphere would soon take a dramatic turn. At the height of the celebration, Ellen stood up to give a toast. As she began speaking, her voice cracked slightly, betraying the emotions she had been hiding. She thanked everyone for coming and praised Peter for being the pillar of their family, but as she continued, her tone shifted. Peter, she said, a truth that's been weighing on my heart for far too long. The room fell silent. Guests exchanged curious glances, unsure of what was happening. Peter, now visibly confused, looked at his wife. He had no idea what was coming. Ellen took a deep breath, her eyes locking onto Peter's. <laughs> I know about the affair, Peter. The affair you've been having with Emily, the nurse. The shock in the room was palpable. Peter's face drained of color and his body stiffened. His eyes darted around, searching for a way out, but it was too late. The truth was out in the open. Emily, the nurse in question, was standing across the room. She had been working with Peter for several years, assisting him with medical needs as he struggled with his health. 
What had begun as a professional relationship had quickly turned into something far more intimate. Peter had never expected his wife to find out, and he certainly didn't expect her to confront him in front of all their loved ones. Helen's words were sharp, cutting through the tension like a knife. For months I've watched you come and go, always looking the other way, trusting you when you promised me nothing was wrong. But now, I know the truth. I know about your meetings, your late-night calls, the time you spent with her, and I want you to look everyone here in the eyes and admit it. Peter, at a loss for words, stood there frozen, his mind racing. The room was silent except for the soft hum of murmurs and gasps. He had never imagined that Ellen would expose him in such a public and devastating way, his mind raced for an escape, but he found none. His hands trembled as he reached for his glass of water, but he couldn't bring himself to drink it. Ellen continued, her voice trembling with a mixture of fury and heartbreak. You didn't just betray me, Peter. You betrayed our children, our family, and everyone who has ever trusted you. You've shown me your true colors tonight, and now I'm done pretending. The guests were in shock some unsure of how to react, others too stunned to speak. Peter's family, especially their children, were horrified. They had never suspected anything, never dreamed that their father could be capable of such a betrayal. His daughter, Sarah, was the first to speak. Mom, are you serious? Dad, what is she talking about? Her voice was laced with disbelief. Peter, finally finding his voice, turned to his daughter. Sarah, please, this isn't what it looks like. But the words were hollow. There was no way to deny what had been revealed, no way to justify the years of deceit. The tension in the room grew unbearable. Peter's face flushed with embarrassment and anger, while Ellen stood tall, her heart pounding with a mix of hurt and vindication. For so long she had suspected, but now the truth was out. Emily, who had remained silent until then, finally spoke up, her voice weak. Peter, we can't work through this. We don't have to tell them everything. Ellen's eyes locked onto Emily's with a cold fury. No, Emily, you don't get to play the victim here. You knew exactly what you were doing. You knew he was married. You knew the pain you were causing. The confrontation quickly escalated into a shouting match. Ellen demanded that Emily leave the party, and after a tense moment, she did. The guests, now unsure of what to do, began to filter out. The celebration was over, and what had once been a joyful occasion had turned into a chaotic and emotional battlefield. As the last of the guests left, Peter and Ellen were left alone in the empty hall. The air was thick with the weight of what had just happened. Peter, his face flushed with anger and shame, looked at Ellen. How could you do this, Ellen? How could you humiliate me like this? He spat, his voice low and venomous. Ellen, her eyes cold and unwavering, stood her ground. I didn't humiliate you, Peter. You humiliated yourself. I gave you everything, and you chose her over me. I'm done. This marriage is over. For a moment, Peter stood there, speechless. The anger inside him boiled over, but deep down, he knew there was no coming back from this. Ellen had exposed him for what he was, a man who had betrayed his vows, his family, and his life. The love they had once shared was gone, replaced by resentment, distrust, and a deep sense of betrayal. The fallout from that night was swift and far-reaching. The story of Peter's affair made its way through the community, and the repercussions were severe. Peter's business, once thriving, began to suffer. Clients began pulling away, unwilling to associate with someone whose personal life had become so tainted. 
His friends distanced themselves, unable to reconcile the man they knew with the cheater who had been exposed in such a public manner. Ellen, on the other hand, found herself caught between anger and a sense of liberation. She had spent years being faithful to a man who had lied to her, and now she was free. But it wasn't an easy freedom. She struggled with feelings of betrayal and confusion, unable to understand how Peter could have been so careless, so selfish. Yet, deep down, she knew that she had done the right thing. She had exposed the truth, and in doing so, had freed herself from a marriage that had been built on lies. As time went on, Peter tried to salvage what was left of his reputation. He attempted to patch things up with his family, but the damage was irreversible. Ellen filed for divorce, and their once strong marriage was officially over. Peter moved out of the family home, and his relationship with Emily, the nurse, fizzled out. She had hoped that Peter would choose her, but the fallout from the affair proved too much. The affair was over before it had really begun. In the years that followed, Peter's life continued to spiral downward. He lost friends, clients, and his family. He tried to rebuild his life, but the shadows of his betrayal lingered. Meanwhile, Ellen found strength in her independence. She focused on her children, on her own healing, and on rebuilding the life she had once thought <laughs> was stable. Um, despite the emotional toll of the past year, Ellen began to rediscover her sense of self. No longer defined by her role as Peter's wife, she found solace in the support of her friends and family who rallied around her in the wake of the scandal. As time passed, Ellen learned to embrace her independence, focusing on her own happiness and the future that lay ahead. She became involved in community activities, volunteering her time at local charities and organizations. Her involvement in these endeavors helped her heal, providing her with a new sense of purpose and fulfillment. She even started to travel, something she had always dreamed of doing but had put on hold for years while supporting Peter's career. With each new adventure, Ellen began to reclaim the life that had been stolen from her during the years of marriage to a man who had taken her love and trust for granted. Peter, meanwhile, faced a much more difficult road. The fall from grace was brutal. His business, once thriving, never recovered from the public scandal. Clients who had once trusted him now viewed him with disdain, unwilling to do business with a man whose personal life had become a spectacle. His reputation was permanently damaged, and the relationships he had spent decades cultivating disintegrated. In his personal life, Peter was left to pick up the pieces. Emily, the nurse who had been the catalyst for his downfall, eventually moved on as well. The affair had, in the end, proven to be little more than a fleeting distraction. With no real emotional foundation, it crumbled under the weight of Peter's personal losses and the public shame that followed. Emily found herself caught in the fallout, her reputation also tainted by her involvement with a married man. She, too, struggled to find stability, her own personal and professional life suffering as a result of the affair. Peter's children, who had initially tried to support him, began to distance themselves. Their relationship with their father was forever altered by the events of that night. They could no longer look at him the same way. For years they had seen their father as a dependable figure, a role model. Now they viewed him through the lens of betrayal. The pain they felt was deep, and though they tried to maintain a relationship with him, the trust had been irreparably broken. The emotional fallout of the affair continued to reverberate for years. Peter struggled with feelings of isolation and regret, but it was too late. His attempt to reconcile with his family, especially Ellen, was met with cold resistance. Ellen had moved on, not just physically, but emotionally as well. The pain of the betrayal was still there, but over time, it faded.
replaced by a hard-won sense of empowerment. As Ellen moved forward with her life, she met new people, some of whom would become close friends, others who would come to represent the potential for future relationships. But despite the possibility of new love, Ellen was wary. The scars of her past were still fresh, and the idea of trusting someone again was a difficult hurdle. She often found herself reflecting on what had happened, how the man she had trusted for so long had betrayed her in such a devastating way. Peter, on the other hand, lived with the weight of his actions every day. His loneliness became palpable, and though he attempted to reconcile with his children, his efforts were futile. His reputation in the community was tarnished, and he found himself largely isolated. He took to spending his days alone, grappling with the guilt of his past decisions. At times, he tried to justify his actions, but deep down, he knew the truth. He had destroyed his marriage, his family, and his own sense of integrity. The emotional toll of their shattered relationship took its toll on both Peter and Ellen in different ways. While Ellen embraced her newfound independence and strength, Peter was left with the wreckage of his past mistakes. For him, redemption seemed impossible, and though he tried to make amends, he was unable to undo the damage he had caused. It wasn't until years later that Peter finally reached out to Ellen, not in an attempt to win her back, but to apologize. He had spent years reflecting on his actions, on the hurt he had caused, and the way his life had spiraled downward. His attempt to reconcile was not about regaining what they had lost, but acknowledging the pain he had inflicted. Ellen received his letter with mixed emotions. The years of bitterness had dulled, but the hurt still lingered. She wasn't sure if forgiveness was possible, but in that moment she realized that it didn't matter. She had moved on, and the man who had once been her world was now a distant memory. What mattered now was her own life, one that she had rebuilt with time, strength, and resilience. She did not need Peter's apology to validate her choices. The apology was for him, not for her. As for the community, the scandal of Peter's affair faded into the past, becoming just another whispered story among the older residents. Some still remembered the chaos of that fateful birthday party, the day when Peter's life had unraveled in front of their eyes. It was a reminder to them that even the most respected members of society could have secrets, and those secrets, when exposed, could change everything. Ellen, on the other hand, moved forward with grace. Her children, though scarred by the past, grew to appreciate the strength their mother had shown. They respected her for the way she had handled the betrayal and how she had rebuilt her life. They understood that the family they once had was gone, but they also realized that the woman who had been at the heart of it, their mother, was far more resilient than they had ever imagined. Years later, Ellen would reflect on that fateful night, the night when the truth had come to light. She would never forget the pain of discovering Peter's betrayal, but she also knew that the person she had become, the life she had rebuilt, was something far greater than the one she had left behind. The pain of the past had shaped her, but it no longer defined her. For Peter, the years were filled with regret, but no matter how hard he tried, he could not undo the past. His life, once filled with promise, had been reduced to a series of mistakes and lost opportunities. He lived with the knowledge that his betrayal had not only destroyed his marriage, but also his family's trust and his own self-worth. As the years passed, Peter became a cautionary tale, a man who had everything and lost it all in a moment of weakness. And so life moved on. Ellen, free from the chains of her past, embraced the future with courage. Peter, consumed by regret, remained stuck in the past, a prisoner of his own actions. 
Their paths had diverged, and the once promising future they had shared was now a distant memory. But in the end, Ellen found peace, while Peter was left to face the consequences of a life built on lies. As the years continued to pass, Ellen's life grew richer with each passing day. She became a beloved figure in her community, admired not just for her resilience, but for her warmth and generosity. Her once shattered heart began to heal completely, piece by piece, and while the scars remained, they no longer defined her. She embraced new friendships, and those who had witnessed her transformation marveled at her strength. She learned to love herself again, not in spite of the pain she had endured, but because of it. It was as if the hurt she had felt had forged a new, more powerful version of herself. Someone who could stand tall in the face of adversity and take on the world. Ellen's children, Sarah and David, had grown into adults with families of their own, and they watched with pride as their mother thrived. They saw how she had not just survived the heartbreak of betrayal, but had used it to fuel her own growth. They often marveled at how she had never let the bitterness take root. Instead, she had let it pass through her, like a storm that raged and then cleared. <laughs> Ellen's ability to forgive herself, even if she could never forgive Peter, was something they had learned to admire. In her early 70s, Ellen met someone new, a man named Richard, a retired architect who had lived in the same town for many years. They met at a charity event and their connection was instant. Richard was kind, compassionate, and most importantly, he never pressured Ellen. He understood her need for space and independence, and he respected the life she had rebuilt. Ellen, who had once feared the idea of starting over, found herself slowly opening up to the possibility of love again. Their relationship, unlike her marriage to Peter, was built on mutual respect and understanding. Richard wasn't trying to fix her or heal her wounds. Instead, he embraced her as she was, someone who had weathered storms and come out stronger on the other side. Ellen found comfort in his quiet companionship, and over time, she allowed herself to trust him. It wasn't a dramatic love affair like the one she had shared with Peter. It was a steady, grounded connection that grew slowly, without rushing or pretense. Meanwhile, Peter continued his spiral. His uh, business had collapsed years earlier, and he had never fully recovered. The isolation he felt only deepened as he continued to push away the few people who had tried to help him. His children, though they still spoke to him occasionally, kept their distance. They had their own families now, and while they didn't entirely write him off, they couldn't forget what he had done to their mother. They still loved him, but the man he had become was a far cry from the father they had once admired. Peter had attempted therapy for a time, trying to understand his actions and the consequences they had wrought, but no matter how much he tried to reconcile his past, he found himself stuck in an endless loop of guilt and regret. The affair with Emily, the betrayal of Ellen, and the fallout from that public revelation weighed heavily on him. The truth was, he had never truly understood why he had done it, why he had risked everything for something that, in the end, had been so fleeting and empty. In the quiet of his lonely home, Peter often wondered if he would ever find peace with himself. The shame, the loneliness, and the regret followed him like an oppressive cloud that would never clear. The few friends who had stuck by him had dwindled, and the community, once so welcoming, now viewed him with a mixture of pity and distaste. Peter's life had become a series of half-hearted attempts to reconnect with the people he had hurt, but those attempts were often met with coldness or, at best, polite indifference. The once proud businessman was now just another cautionary tale in the town a man whose life was a warning about the dangers of dishonesty, betrayal, and selfishness. 
In contrast, Ellen's life blossomed. She and Richard traveled together, visited new places, and created memories that were theirs alone. The joy she had once thought was lost to her forever slowly returned. She found peace in the little things, a quiet morning with a cup of coffee, a walk in the park, the laughter of her grandchildren. For the first time in many years, Ellen felt truly content. She had rebuilt her life from the ground up, and in doing so, she had rediscovered the strength she had always possessed. Though Ellen never completely forgot what had happened with Peter, she had learned to live with it. It was a part of her story, but it no longer consumed her. She had found a new sense of self-worth, and in that she had found a form of peace that Peter could never grasp. Ellen understood that life, with all its twists and turns, was unpredictable. The pain of her past would always be there, but it had become something she could look at without flinching. It was a part of her history, but it was not the whole of her. One summer evening, as Ellen and Richard sat on the porch of her home, watching the sun set over the horizon, she reflected on the journey she had been through. It had been a long, painful road, but it had led her to this moment of peace. She had loved deeply, been betrayed in ways she could never have imagined, and had come out the other side a stronger, wiser woman. And now at this stage in her life, she was not just surviving, she was thriving. Peter, however, was still locked in the past. His once promising future was now a series of regrets, and though he often tried to reach out to his children, he found them increasingly distant. They had their own lives now, their own families, and while they had not severed ties with him completely, the relationship they had with their father was strained, fragile at best. Peter would never get back the life he had lost, and he knew that. He often wondered if, in some distant future, his children would remember him at all, or if he would become just another faded figure from their past, a man who had once been a part of their lives but was no longer relevant. As for Ellen, she had found a peace that Peter would never know. She had been broken by his betrayal, but in that breaking, she had been forged into something stronger, Peter's fall from grace had caused her pain, but it had also allowed her to reclaim her power. She had taken back her life, piece by piece, and had become the woman she was always meant to be. In the end, the story of Peter and Ellen was one of loss and recovery, of betrayal and redemption, but also of personal growth. Ellen's journey was not defined by the man who had hurt her, but by her ability to rise above the pain and build a new life. Peter's, on the other hand, was marked by regret, a man who could never undo his mistakes, but could only live with the consequences of his actions. And so, years after the fateful birthday party that had changed everything, the town had long since moved on. Peter's affair was now a forgotten scandal, whispered about only in passing. But for those who knew the story, it remained a cautionary tale, a reminder of the fragility of trust and the long-lasting effects of betrayal. Ellen, however, had long since found the freedom she deserved. Her life had been rebuilt not on the remnants of her past, but on the promise of a future where she could finally be her truest self. It was a future she had built on her own, without Peter without the weight of his mistakes. It was a future that was hers and hers alone. And so, as the years passed, Ellen continued to flourish. She found herself surrounded by people who valued her for who she truly was. Her life was rich with love, friendship, and new experiences. The quiet, peaceful life she had built in the aftermath of Peter's betrayal became a testament to her strength. Her children, now adults, came to respect her not just as a mother, but as a woman who had triumphed over adversity. They often spoke of her resilience and how she had been the cornerstone of their family, even when everything around them had seemed to fall apart. 
Peter, on the other hand, remained a shadow of the man he had once been. He spent his days in isolation, consumed by the weight of his regrets. He had lost everything that truly mattered, his family, his reputation, his sense of self. In the quiet moments, he would think back to that night, the day his whole life had unraveled in front of his eyes, and wonder where it had all gone wrong. He had always thought he could control his destiny, but in the end, it had been his own choices that had led to his downfall. <laughs> the town had largely forgotten the scandal that once rocked their community. Life moved on, as it always does, and the names of Peter and Ellen became distant memories, remembered only by those who had been closest to them. For Ellen, however, the story was no longer one of pain and betrayal. It was one of survival, growth, and empowerment. Peter's actions, while painful, had shaped her into a stronger, wiser woman, and for that she was grateful. Her final years were spent in quiet contentment, her days filled with love and the simple pleasures of life. She often reflected on the journey she had taken, the hardship and the healing, and the incredible transformation that had come from a place of darkness. She had learned that sometimes the most painful experiences can lead to the most profound personal growth. And while she had never asked for the betrayal, she had come to understand that it had played a crucial part in the woman she had become. In the end, Ellen's life was a story of redemption, not for Peter, but for herself. She had been given the chance to rewrite her own narrative, to emerge from the wreckage of her past, and to find peace and happiness on her own terms. She had learned that the power to define her life was hers alone. And with that, she closed the chapter on her past and embraced the future, no longer defined by the mistakes of others, but by the strength and resilience she had found within herself. The End